Hi, I'm Jeff Payne. I'm a preventive maintenance instructor with CAT. And uh, I want to talk to you about undercarriage today. And as you all know, undercarriage wear is a very expensive part of owning and operating a machine like this. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to lower that cost for you. So to start with, the front of the machine has the idler up here. As you can see by the orientation of this machine, this is how you always want to work the machine. You want to work and dig over the idler. That's the way this machine is designed to work. If you're digging off the side or off the back, you're going to increase wear to components on here. Also, as we move back on it, we have our track shoes. We're always looking for missing bolts, loose bolts on here. Sometimes when I climb out of a cab on a machine, I'll step down, I'll hear a, a uh, track segment, I'll hear it wiggle, and I'll, it's a good indication that it's loose. If it's loose, it's going to cause problems. As we move back on here, I've got a spot here that actually made a couple uh, a T and an L on here for you so you can see what I was talking about. These shoes work together as they roll around in here. This is our trailing edge of the shoe. This is our leading edge of the shoe. You can see how they fit together like this and they support each other. So what happens when you start to get, if you got a bent shoe on this machine and you just say, well, that's just one shoe. I'm not going to replace it right now. When you bend one, it starts to lead to the next one bending, to the next one bending, and pretty soon you got a whole bunch of bad shoes and your cost is going up. As we go back on here, we have these guards and guides on the bottom down here. You may know them as rock guards and think that they're not really that important in the areas you work in, but they're an uh, important part of keeping everything aligned underneath the machine as it travels. So if these are damaged or bent, they need to be replaced. When you get to the back of the machine back here, back in here, you have your sprocket in here, your final drive. I'm always looking for oil and leaks down here while I'm looking. I'm looking at my teeth down in here, my bolts around there, making sure they're all there and tight. Now, one of the things that can lead to high track wear is the proper or improper tension of this track and packing in the track. So one thing, at the end of the day, if you got a lot of packing here, it's nice to, you can swing the carriage, lift the track up just a little bit, just get it off the ground, not real high, or you can damage the other side of the track and you can roll that track a little bit to try to clean out some of that debris or you can use the shovel. But tension, that's a big one on wear. I see a lot of people will take these tracks and run them too tight. And running them too tight is going to wear out these components faster than they should. So we need the proper tension. That proper tension can be found in the operation and maintenance manual located behind the seat in the seat pocket to tell you how to set this track. Typically on a machine like this, it would tell me to pull the machine forward very slowly, stopping with a pin right over the top of this carrier roller up here. And I'll use a straight edge or a string and run it over here and hang it off the edge or sit the straight edge on it. And I'm looking for sag, my lowest point off the top of the grouse here. I'm looking for that sag. I'd have to look in the book, but this is probably an inch and a half to two and a quarter inches of sag on this machine. And I find a lot of people running these things too tight because they think the track's loose. Now to set track tension, you also need to be in the operation, the uh, underfoot that you're going to operate the machine in. So it may change, the tension might, depending on what kind of materials you're working in. So you need to check that periodically. Also, I've got one more thing I want to show you that's underneath the back of the machine here. So come on around. Okay, underneath on the back side here, you can see the master link here with this uh, cotter pin in it. You want to make sure those cotter pins are there. If they're not, you're going to have problems down the road with that too. Also while we're underneath here, let's talk about operating. This is the rear end of the machine where the sprockets are at. You always want to operate these machines as much as you can forward, going forward with the sprockets in the rear. Whenever you're backing up, you're increasing the wear to the undercarriage. And like we said, we want to lower that cost of repairing this undercarriage. So as much as you can, try to operate that machine in a forward direction. Last but not least, if you have to let your machine sit for an extended period of time, you need to start that machine up um, at least every couple of months. Start that machine up and exercise the track. If you let that machine sit for long periods of time, there's a good chance that these pins can seize in here on your track and that'll have a lot of bad consequences when you start to use that machine again. So that's only necessary if your machine sits for long periods of time. Start it up, either raise it up, roll the track or move the machine forward and backwards. Exercise that track a little bit so it's not always sitting in the same position. For more information, you can check in your operation and maintenance manual located uh, behind the seat in the seat pocket. And as always, 
you can contact your local cat dealer for help.